Good morning students. In the previous session, I had told you that that problems on relations were over. In the next session, I would be starting the function. Now, uh, in uh, today's session, I am going to give you the definition of function and the definition of the range, domain and codomain and also real and real valued function. So, these are the things you are going to learn in uh, today's session, in this particular session. Now, this uh, function is a very important concept. Here afterwards, no, we will be considering different types of functions. So, you should have a good knowledge of function uh, because um, maximum part of mathematics depends upon the definition because we will be considering different types of functions. So, you should know what exactly a function means. Now, generally we can say a function is a special type of relation, but how do you define this? How do you define a function? Here also as in the case of a relation, we consider two non-empty sets. See, do not get confused between relation and function. Both of them are, uh, diff, uh, they, uh, of course, connected con concepts only. All the relations cannot become function. Only a particular type of relation can become a function. I will give an example so that you will have a clear picture about the function. Now, here also we will be considering two non-empty sets. I will come to the definition afterwards. I will give you example. Now, consider two sets here say A and B, both of them are non-empty sets. Now, let me take the elements of A to B, 1, 2, 3 and here it may be say A, B, C, D, E. There are 5 elements. See, these are numbers and those are alphabets. Now, here a function, how do you define that one? Just now I said that it is a special type of relation, but that, that cannot be taken as the definition for a function. The function should be understood like this. A function is a rule which associates each and every element belonging to the first set with the unique element of the second set. That these words are important. Whenever you write a definition, you have to use the words properly. If you omit any one word, it may not give the correct meaning. Now, a function is a rule which associates each and every element belonging to the first set with a unique element of the second set. What do you mean by unique here? Unique means that this element, each element should have only one association. That means it has to be associated with only one element like 1B is associated with A. 2 can also be associated with A. 3 would be associated. Let us take like this. Look here. See, 1 is associated with only one element here. 2 is also associated with only one element here. Both of them have unique associations. Here, 1 is associated with A and not with C like that. Now, so this is called as the unique association. Each element belonging to the first set should be associated with only one and only element of the second set. That is called as the unique association. And another thing you observe, all the elements belonging to the first set have been associated. No element is left out. So, the definition is like this, a function from A to B, let A and B be two non-empty sets. A function usually we denote it with the small letter F here. A function F from A to B is a rule which associates each and every element of the first set A with a unique element of the second set B. So, this is the definition and how do you write this one? This is the notation we use. F you write like this A and arrow mark B. That is how do you read this one? F is a function from A to B. This is how it has to be read and this is how we denote it. A function is denoted like this. And how do you read that one? F is a function from A to B. This is how it has to be read. See, I will consider another example here. I will show that the, it, it can be a relation but not a function. That is why I just now said that all the relations cannot be a function. I will take the same elements 1, 2, 3. I uh, will take one more element 5 here 
and let me take the elements 0, 1, 4. Suppose I define a relation, I am coming to the word relation here. Suppose I define a relation E is less than, you know that relation is a subset of A cross B. So you take the first element from the first set and second element from the second set. Now here, uh, or you can uh, take uh, one more element, say 3. Now suppose I take the relation E is less than, take the first element 1. 1 is less than 3 and 1 is less than 4. That means that 1 is associated with the 3 and 1 is associated with 4. What you observe here? The, the association is not unique. This is a relation. It, for a relation this holds good. Similarly, here 2. 2 is less than 3. 2 is less than 4. So, 1 is also having not unique image two associations. 2 is also having two image, two associations and the 3 does not have any uh, of course for 3 also 3 is less than 4 you can take 3 comma 4. Come to this one 5. You observe that all these numbers are less than uh, say I mean uh, this number cannot be less than that is all of the second elements no, they are less than this one. So, phi cannot be less than any of this element. What do you mean by that one? This number phi does not have any association. So, it is a relation. You can take this for a relation but it cannot be a function. According to the definition of the function, first thing is the all the elements of the first set should have unique associations. 1, 2, 3, let me take the numbers itself. See this is A, this is B. Now 1 is associated with 4. Let 2 be associated with 4. Let 3 be associated with 6. What do you observe here? All the three elements have been associated and all the associations are unique by nature. No element is left out. So that is the definition of a function. That is each and every, that is why I am stressing that point, each and every element of the first set should have unique association in the second set. So a function is a rule from the set A onto the set B which associates each and every element of the set A with a unique element of the second set. No element should be left over here. See in the case of a relation depending upon the definition of the relation some elements may be left out. So that is okay for a relation but it, can, it cannot be, it cannot happen in the case of a function. We do not call it as a function. You observe all the three are having associations and all of them are having unique. One is associated with only one element, two is associated with only one element, three is associated with only one element. Suppose I have taken the relation less than, 3 is less than 6, 3 is less than 5, 3 is less than 4, 3 is less than 7. So 3 will have 4 associations. So it cannot be taken as a function. It can be a relation but not a function. So you just understand the difference between a relation and function because both the terms will be using. So here afterwards we will be considering function only. So let A and B be two non-empty sets, then a function from A to B is a rule which associates each and every element with the unique element of the set B and is denoted by like this. We read it as f is a function from A to B. Now I have taken a particular example, I mean uh, actual values I had given. Generally, generally suppose I take only some general element I am considering. Let me assume that. Uh, a is the first set, B is the second set, a relation, a, a function exists from A to B here. Now, if X belonging to A is associated with Y belonging to B, that is X belonging to A is associated, we use the word associated with, with Y belonging to B, then we write y is equal to fx. We write y is equal to fx. Now, this is the general way. How do you read that one? y is a function of x. See, f, uh, if you write like this, f, we read this as f is a function from a to b. This is in general from set a to set b. We have, uh, we have defined a function 
from the first set A to the second set B. That is the way we write the function. Here, each element, if x belonging to the first set, is associated with y belonging to the second set under the function f, that is important, under the function f, then we write y is equal to fx. Here afterwards, this is how we will be expressing the function. What do you mean by that one? Y, how do you read this one? Y is a function of x here. Y is a function of x here. Now, the element x belonging to the first one, see this y, which is associated with x under the function, y is called the image, y is called the image of x. Now, because x has been associated with y, we call y as the image of x. And what do you call x here? x is called the pre-image of y. Okay, pre-image means before that. So, here, if x belonging to the first set is associated with y belonging to the second set under the function f, then we say y is the image of x under the function f. Then, what do you call x here? x is the pre-image. x is the pre-image of y under the same function f. So, this is how we should know these words here. Okay, so it is pre-image, x is the pre-image of y and y is the image of x. Now here, uh, you should be familiar with all these uh, terms here. So generally, how do, you, how do you say now? A function is a rule which associates, uh, let A and B be two non-empty sets, that is important. A function from A, F from A to B is a rule which associates each and every element belonging to the first set A with a unique element belonging to the second set. Then, gen and we write it as f is a function from A, write an arrow mark and B. So, we read it as f is a function from A to B. So, a function can also be said as a, it's a special type of a relation. So, without using the word relation, we can define the function in this way. Now, if uh, an element belonging to the first set is associated with an element belonging to the second set, say here, it is written as y is equal to fx. How do you read that one? y is a function of x. That is how we read that one. Now, y is called as the image of x and x is called as the image pre-image of y under the function f. Now, this is how we have to write. Now, I will give you, I will write some diagram. Then you will know uh, whether you can find out whether it is a function or not. Now, uh, I am writing two se uh, sets here and uh, I am giving some associations. Let me take the sets to be A and B. Both of them are non-empty. Some elements I am writing say 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me write it as A, B, C. Now, uh, uh, here I am just considering F. I do not know whether F is a function or not. Now, let me do the association properly. Suppose it is like this. Now, uh, let me see whether I have written a figure here. I have written two sets here. And uh, I have written four elements here, three elements here in the second set. Now, let us see how the numbers of the first set have been associated. Look here, one, A is the image of one, C is also the image of one. What do you mean by that one? One has been associated with two elements, A and C. And two, of course, it is a unique image, three and four have got unique images here, okay. Now, can we call it as a function? It goes against the definition of the function. What, what does the definition of the function say? Each element should be uniquely associated with an element of the second set. In this example, in this figure, one has been associated not with one element, it has been associated with two elements. So, this cannot be a function. The reason, suppose usually such problems are not asked, 
I am writing this only to make you understand the correct definition of a function. So, each element belonging to the first set should be uniquely associated. It should have only one association. It should be associated with only one element here. Whereas here, one has been associated with two different elements. Therefore, how do you write the reason? It is not a function. What's the reason you give? One is associated with two elements which is against the definition of the function. Now, let me consider another example here. Now, same elements I am taking. Now, look here. Of course, in this example you observe, one is associated with only one element. 2 with only 1 element, 3 with only 1 element. So, association is unique, no problem. But what is the other condition? Each and every element belonging to the first set, you observe this number 4 does not have any association at all. It is left out, is not it? So, that is against, again, against the definition of a function. According to the definition of the function, each and every element so, no element should be left out. So, each and every element should have unique image. The images are unique here, no problem. Each one is associated with only one element. But this element 4 does not have any association at all. That is, one element has been left out. Therefore, even this cannot be called a function. Now, let me consider another example. I am considering the same elements here. 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C. Now, here 1. Now, clearly we call it as a function because it satisfies both the conditions. First condition is each element is uniquely associated. That means each element should have only one image because you know the word image, I am using that word. Each element belonging to the first set is having only one image. That is image of 1 is A, image of 2 is A. So, both of them are having same image. But here each one is having only one image. Now, 3 is with B, 4 is with C and all the elements have been associated. So, this is a function. So, remember both the conditions. First condition, all the elements should have unique images. They should be associated with only, each element should be associated with only one element. Now, uh, uh, and one thing, and other thing is all the elements should have the images. No element should be left out. If an element is left out, it is against the definition of the function. Or if the if each element is having two two images in the second one, even that goes against the definition of the function. So each and every element of the first set should have unique image in the second set. So before we know the word image, no, we just use the word association. Here we know the word image, we use that word. So each and every element belonging to the first set should have unique image in the second set. Now, let us see uh, how it can be uh, considered in a, in a different way also. Let me consider an example, take two sets here, let, a, let us define a function f from a to b, 1, 2, 3, 4 and here uh, say a, b, c, d. There are four elements here. According to the definition of this one, let me consider like this. Now, clearly you can see that it is a function, isn't it? So, 1 has got only one image, 2 has got only one image as well as 3 and 4, they have got unique images here. Now, uh, just now I said that if x belonging to the first set is associated with y belonging to the second set, this is how we write. And how do you read this one? y is a function of x. Now, similar, in the same way, I am considering a particular example. Now, here y is equal to fx. That means that, suppose you take the one, number 1, a is equal to f of 1. In the place of y, I am having a. In the place of x, it is 1. Similarly, a is equal to f of 2. 
and then come to the third element. It is C is equal to F of 3 and D is equal to F of 4. Isn't it? Now, this is how we write. Now, as in the case of an ordered uh, relation, here also a function can be represented as the set of ordered pairs. And how, do, how could you write that one? It is written like this. Just like relation, function is also written as a set of ordered pairs here. Look here, 1 is associated with A. First element always should be taken from the first set, second element from the second set. So, 1 has got the image A. Similarly, 2 has got the image A and 3 has got the image C and 4 has got the image D. Now, this is how a function would be represented using the ordered pairs. F is a function from F A to B. We use that arrow mark and up. And e for each element, regarding each element, uh, we write y equal to fx. This is in general. This is the general way of expressing a function. And how do you read this one? Y is a function of f. f means it is a general function. It can be an algebraic, trigonometric, exponential, logarithm, different types of functions will be coming across. In general, we write it as y is equal to fx here. Now, uh, after getting this is a particular example I am considering, this is how a function should be represented. That is, f is nothing but a set of ordered pairs here. Now, clearly you observe that f is also a subset of a cross b. The Cartesian product, which I given in the earlier sessions, Cartesian product means 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 elements are there, 4 elements. So, if you calculate a cross b, they, it will have 16 elements, but only these 4 elements will be considered. Now, therefore, f as I, see, uh, I had mentioned R is also a subset of a cross b, f is also a subset of a cross b, this is what we observe. And after writing this one, you observe one more thing, look here. 1, 2, 3, 4, what are they? Those are the elements of the first set and all of them have appeared only once. That is a condition. See the other way of explaining a function, all the elements of the first set should appear as the first elements of the ordered pairs. That is the first condition. And then see, no two ordered pairs will have the same first element. Look here. All the first elements are different. Second element may be same, but the first element should be separate. So, after writing this in the form of ordered pairs, no, we can see, we can observe that here all the elements of the first set have appeared as the first element of the function, first elements of the function, that is one thing. Then, no two ordered pairs, T W O 2, no two ordered pairs have the same first element the, like uh, 1 comma A, 1 comma B like that. It is not there. So, each element, uh, see here yeah, I can write like this, C 3 can be associated with A, 4 can be associated with A. In that case, now all of them will be written like this. That is possible. That does not go against the definition of the function. All the four elements now have been associated with A only, but all the images are unique here. But no two ordered pairs should have the same first element. That is one thing. And all the elements of the first set should appear as the first elements of the ordered pairs of the function. Now, uh, these are uh, the, the definition of function. This is how we explain that one. It can be explained in another way like this when we consider the ordered pairs. Otherwise, generally a function f from A to B is a rule which associates each and every element of the first set with a unique element of the second set. Now, uh, and this is how we express when we have a particular element. So, after looking at the ordered pairs that we get here, we can say that f is also a subset of a cross b. That means when two sets are there. Now here the next is say as in the case of a relation as we learned there, here also we will be learning the new words here domain, co-domain and range of the function. See here do not get confused because we had used the same words in the case of relation. So, I am specifying certain uh, things here because the chances of getting confused will be more here. Now, 
domain codomain range we had discussed in the case of a relation also here the range and codomain would be same the definition of domain would be little bit different you have to be careful now codomain codomain range let me assume that f is a function from a to b f is a function from a to b then the set a is called as the domain domain of f the first set first set a is called as the domain of f in the case of relation the set of the first elements i had mentioned here since all the elements would be there as the first element the whole of the first set we take it as a domain of f that is if f is a function from a to b a is called as the domain of f and what do you call b b is the codomain the whole of the second set b whole of the first set a is called as a domain whole of the second set b is called as a codomain range what do you mean by range same thing range is range is the set of the images range is the set of the images of the elements elements of a of a a means it is the domain so range is the set of all the images of all the elements set of the images of the elements of the first set a that is known as the range here and range would be always a subset of codomain sometimes range may be exactly equal to codomain also okay because if all the elements of the codomain are the images of some elements of a in that case no range may be equal to codomain but generally range would be a subset of codomain so range is written like this range of a function we write like this this is how we write so co domain codomain range means suppose f is a function from a to b the first set a is called as the domain of f the second set b is called as the codomain of f and the set of the images of the elements of the domain or in this case it is a is called as the range of f and we write range is equal to f of a and the range would be always a subset of the codomain that is why we started the first year portion by the definition of set each and every where each and everything is uh, uh, defined using considering a particular set so range would be a subset of codomain always sometimes depending upon the way how the function is defined the range may be equal to codomain but generally we can say range is a subset of the codomain now i'll i'll take an example here so that you will clearly understand the definition of the uh, domain range like this better we take a, an example here of course i am writing always uh, i'm explaining everything with the help of a diagram so that the idea will be very much clear because this is a very important concept now let me consider two non empty sets a and b and let f be a function from a to b that is f is a function from a to b now uh, let me consider the elements say there are four elements here let me take uh, say a b c d let us assume that there are let me there, there may be one more element so a contains four elements here b contains five elements a b c d e now let me associate like one may be with a two three and b like this just an example i am considering here now look here it it can be considered as a function since all the four elements have been associated uniquely image of 1 is a image of 2 is a image of 3 is d image of 4 is d so and all of them have been associated all of them are having unique images now uh, which is the domain here the first set so domain is a and what is the codomain as usual the second set is the codomain now the range here range range means the set of the images of the elements of the set a now what are the only a and d 
have, uh, have, uh, we have taken o, A and D to be the images of the elements of this one. B, C, E, they are not at all associated with the elements of this one. Therefore, in the range there exist only two elements, say A and D. Clearly you observe that this set, that the range is a subset of the co-domain that is equal to B here. Therefore, this is how we write. So, domain of F is A, co-domain of F is B. The range is containing two elements A and A, which is a subset of the co-domain B here. Now, because, because you observe only A and D belonging to the second set B have got the pre-images. These elements, they do not have any pre-images. Therefore, they cannot come under the set range here. Range means it is the set of the images of the elements of the domain. Therefore, this is how we have to write. So, sometimes no, uh, uh, when a problem is given, you will be asked to write the domain and the range. You may be because here domain would be the first set, co-domain would be the second set. Sometimes they ask you to find out the domain also depending upon how the function is defined. Now, uh, one more information, one more definition. Real function and real value function. So, you will be considering real functions. So, you should know the meaning of real function and real valued function. Suppose f is a function from A to B. When do you say that it is a real valued function? First, I will come to real valued function. What do you mean by real valued function is, suppose the range of this function, range would be a subset of B or it may be exactly equal to B also. If the range of the function is the set of real numbers, what do you mean by real number? It contains positive negative integers, 0, positive negative rational number, positive negative irrational number. All these numbers come under the set of the real numbers. So, if the range of this function is the set of real numbers itself or may be a subset of the set of real numbers, it may be a subset of the real numbers R or maybe itself is, is a uh, set of real numbers. Then we call such functions as real valued function. It depends upon the range. If the range is a set of the real numbers or maybe a subset of that one, it is called as real valued function. That means that the, ima the images are all real valued, images are all real numbers. That is the meaning of that one. Now, if the domain is also the set of real numbers, if the domain is also real number, if the range is also real number, then we call it as a real function. So, for the real function, both the domain and the range should be real numbers. In the case of real valued function, if the range is a real number, if the range of range is a set of real numbers, we call it as a real valued function. Now, these are the things you should remember uh, because in the coming sessions, I am going to work out problems. See, unless you are familiar uh, with these definitions properly, uh, you find difficult to solve the problem. So, f is a function from A to B means it is a rule which associates each and every element of the first set A with a, a, with a unique element of the second set. Then A is called as a domain, B is called as a co-domain and set of the images of the elements of A is called as the range here. And we denote the function to be f from A to B. How do you read this one? f is a function from A to B. If x belonging to the domain, is associated with y belonging to the co-domain under the function f, we always write it as y equal to fx. So, here afterwards we sometimes we write like this, consider a function y equal to fx. So, that is the general function always we will be considering. Now, real function means if the both the range and as well as the domain is a, they are the sets of real numbers or maybe subsets of real number, then it is called as a real function. 
if the range is the a set of the real number or maybe a subset of the set of the real numbers it is called as a real valued function. So with this information you just go through all of them properly in the coming sessions I am going to work out problems on this one. So if you are thorough with the definition here you can work out the problems in the in the coming sessions. Thank you.